Peter Kornblu directs the Cuba Documentation Project at the National Security Archive here in Washington, D.C. He uh, played a pivotal role in declassifying and helping the CIA get those documents declassified that relate to the death of Che Guevara. He joins us now to discuss the contents of some of those uh, documents. So, Peter, really, how big of a threat was Che Guevara to the United States? Why were there so many people trailing this man? Che Guevara was the point man for the expansion of the Cuban Revolution in, in uh, Latin America. And of course, the United States was all into the issue of the domino effect. The Cuban Revolution would lead to other revolutions in other countries. Uh, and obviously, with uh, the support of Fidel Castro, Che did go to Bolivia. His real intent was fostering revolution in his own country, neighboring Argentina. Uh, people forget that Che Guevara was from Argentina, was an Argentine who fought with the Cuban Revolution, but he was not a Cuban himself. Uh, and uh, the idea was, of course, to create an internationalist movement of, of revolutionary uh, insurgencies uh, throughout the region so that Cuba would not be isolated uh, and would be less vulnerable to U.S. attack if the rest of Latin America also moved to the left and, and had revolution. So, Che Guevara, yes, was a, a threat to, to the United States. The Cuban Revolution was seen as a, a threat, a, a model of, a, of insurgency, um, and was actively promoting insurgency uh, in the region. This is not to say that the U.S. response was appropriate. Uh, it was not to say that our counterinsurgency programs were the right thing to do. Um, uh, but from the point of view of our national security managers in the United States of America, um, a revolution could sweep the region because the region was filled with inequality, with the masses of, 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 of poor uh, Latin Americans and uh, wealth contained in just the hands of a few families in each country. Uh, and that made it a, a fragile powder keg for, for revolutionary movements. So who ultimately gave the order to kill him? Was it the Bolivian government, the army, or was it the United States? There's always been debate uh, about this. From the documents that we have seen, and of course, they're mostly U.S. documents, so they may be self-serving, it was, in fact, the Bolivian president himself who gave the order to uh, execute Che Guevara. Why? The Bolivians did not want to admit that they were collaborating with the Central Intelligence Agency and U.S. Special Forces in tracking down Che Guevara. And when news came that he had been uh, wounded, the uh, Bolivian president actually announced that he was dead and had been killed in combat. Uh, so the idea that he would then reappear someplace else after uh, the president had said this in Bolivia uh, was a problem for them. Plus, they wanted to deep six, if you will, hide the, the body and, and make sure that nobody ever saw uh, how he really died. So um, the Bolivian authorities announced that he'd been cremated. Um, and here he was all still alive, uh, and the word came in um, uh, to the little town where he was captured, uh, La Higuera, uh, that he should be executed. There was a CIA operative named Felix Rodriguez, a Cuban-American agent, um, uh, on site, uh, interviewing Che Guevara, talking to him when the execution order uh, came in. In the declassified documents, at least in the White House and in back in Washington, they would have preferred that Che be secreted out of Bolivia and taken to a U.S. base in Panama, the Panama Canal Zone, and interrogated for weeks and months and years, if necessary, broken, um, to give up intelligence on Cuban operations in other parts of the Latin US, America. The U.S. wanted him alive. The U.S. would have preferred to have kind of seized him and, and, and hidden him, taken him to, a, quote, a black site, if you will, perhaps tortured him. But, it, but to get the information that only he could possess as somebody so very high up as a key confidant of Fidel Castro, but the Bolivians um, took rather quick measures to uh, execute him. And you actually spoke with one of the people, one of the agents, CIA agents, that was there when he died. There was a team of two Cuban-American CIA agents who had been detailed to Bolivia to work with the U.S. military special forces, a special unit of the, of the Ranger Battalion, to track down Che Guevara. And the senior official was a, a, an agent named Gustavo Violdo, uh, working with Felix Rodriguez, who was the junior agent. And Violdo uh, actually was there when the body was flown in to Via Grande. He was the one who held the discussions with the local Bolivian commanders on what to do with the body. And 
he told me and the people I was with uh, rather macabre stories that Bolivians wanted to cut off Che Guevara's head and put it in a jar of formaldehyde to prove to the world, show to the world that uh, Che was dead. Um, and Violdo uh, thought this was too much, and he recommended they make what's called a death mask using plaster instead, but that they cut off his hands. Uh, and they did cut off his hands. Uh, those hands uh, were cut off to make sure that they could prove with his fingerprints that it was Che Guevara. The hands actually made their way back to <laughs> Cuba somehow uh, and are now kind of buried um, in a mausoleum in Santa Clara, Cuba. But in the end, Gustavo Violdo was responsible for secretly burying Che Guevara uh, along a, a, an airstrip on the outskirts of this town, Via Grande. His body remained hidden for over 30 years until the late 1990s when it was discovered with the help of reporter John Lee Anderson. Um, and of course, there were the bones, but without, without the hands. Violdo did one really incredible thing. He wanted to kind of symbolically castrate the Cuban Revolution and have a souvenir of his great victory over Che Guevara. So he cut off a pretty thick strand of his hair before he secretly buried him and kept it for years and years and years and eventually auctioned it off with a scrapbook of memorabilia of the defeat of Che Guevara. And that scrapbook is now um, uh, in a bookstore in Houston, Texas, uh, it, the owner of that bookstore. Uh, bought it uh, at an auction in Dallas for over $100,000. Wow. Did he have any, any final thoughts looking back at what had happened all those years ago? You know, my final thoughts are Che Guevara, uh, a, a great myth grew around Che Guevara as a skilled uh, and tactical guerrilla leader. Uh, in the end, both Bolivia and his previous foray into the Congo showed that he wasn't so skilled uh, and wasn't so tactical. Everybody around him died and he died as well. But his death at the, at the hands of the Bolivians with the support of the United States and the Central Intelligence Agency certainly turned him into a legend. And the legend of Che Guevara became inspirational for insurgencies to come. And even though insurgencies died down in Latin America for about a decade, they picked up again um, in the early and mid-1970s. Um, the Nicaraguan Revolution, the Sandinista Revolution, Nicaragua, the guerrilla movement in El Salvador and, and Guatemala. These were bloody uh, affairs, but they showed um, that in the model of Che Guevara was certainly still alive and still uh, inspirational to, to many who sought significant structural change in Latin America. Peter Cornblow, always a pleasure to have you on America's Now. It's always a pleasure to be here. America's Now.